Hey everyone, today I've got five new AI tools, updates, and workflows for you to start experimenting with in your projects. It's kind of a grab bag of tools, but I think they're all useful and should find their way into your bookmarks folder. Okay, let's dive in. Kicking off, we have Semantic Palette, which allows users to paint semantic meanings in addition to colors to create their artwork. The code is available, but you can start playing with Semantic Palette via a demo over on Hugging Face. We're gonna dive into the Semantic Palette demo in just a minute, but just to give you an idea of how it works, it's basically based around Stream Multi Diffusion, which is a real-time interactive multiple text-to-image generator. Stream Multi Diffusion has established compatibility between Multi Diffusion, being that thing that allows us to, you know, draw shapes and then generate within those shapes, and LCMs or latent consistency models is that thing that allows us to draw and have uh, an image generated almost immediately. The demo for Semantic Palette is linked down below. It's over on Hugging Face, so it is completely free. Uh, although, obviously, as more users start to use it, if you run into trouble, you may have to duplicate it into your own space. So the way that Semantic Palette works is that we have kind of a layers section over here for background uh, girl in this case, and we can create new semantic brushes as well. So for now, we're gonna stick to the background layer. And then if we just come down here, uh, this is a oh, haunted mansion, creaking doors, flickering candles, and a chilling presence of restless spirits. I didn't put that, that was just in there. So, uh, but that sounds cool. So let's generate it. And this is what we got. Uh, pretty cool, very sort of Tim Burton-esque. So hopping over to our girl layer and adding in the prompt, one girl, Wednesday Adams, a gothic character casting a spell. Uh, and then by using this brush tool right here, just kind of creating a blob and hitting generate, we end up with this, which is pretty cool. You'll notice that the background did change. I do have a trick on that coming up in just a second. Overall, yeah, the semantic palette demo has very much a anime sort of aesthetic to it. Um, it's just the demo. I think that as the code kind of gets out into the world, obviously a lot of other artistic styles will be added to it. Now, if we did like that previous background, what we could have done is hit the download button, uh, come back down to our semantic drawing pad. Uh, I can hit X here and simply upload that previous background. If you do so, you can actually crop various areas as well. I'm just gonna leave it as is, uh, and we'll hit the generate button again. So we'll draw another blob for our Wednesday Adams character over here and hit generate, and there she is. There's some weird hallucinating things. You can actually come down and control how much the mask is blurring uh, via this slider and how much the mask is alphaing as well uh, with this slider. So you can kind of play around with some things. Uh, from there, you can just continue to add new semantic brushes in. Um, you know, in this case, this is boy. Let's see, you can rename that to whatever you want and create a new mask area and generate from there. Jay Rin Lee, one of the creators of Semantic Paint shows here like how far you can kind of take things. Um, yeah, this is, you know, obviously very, various layers, brushes, and blobs, and, you know, ends up with an image like this. Pretty cool. In another one of my experiments, I ended up with this, kind of this cyberpunk girl, you know, via just basically two blobs. So this was the blob for the girl, this was the blob for the car, and the background was prompted for a cyberpunk city. Now, obviously this is just a demo, and honestly, I just think that you should go over and kind of play with it and get inspired by some ideas that you pull from it. Uh, but where I think the real power of this is going to come into play is when things like control net are added into it and or the ability to add Laura's into it for consistent characters. Characters. So again, the demo is over on Hugging Face if you feel like playing with it, and the code is available if you feel like tinkering with it. Moving on, Magnific, the originators of the Creative Upscaler, which I know some of you get mad at for taking creative liberties in upscaling, but I mean, it's in the name. It's, it's what it's supposed to do. Well, they've introduced a new style transfer feature in which you can transfer a style from one image to another. To give you an idea of how it looks, I took this image generated in Midjourney and this image generated in Midjourney and used a style transfer on them. By taking our green-hued Temple Ruins image and using that as our initial image, uh, we ended up with this, which, uh, yeah, looks pretty cool. And then taking those same two images and reversing the order, so our sunrise tree would be our initial image, uh, we ended up with this, which also looks pretty cool. Actually, that looks really cool. really like that one a lot. Uh, there are a number of options that you can explore with style transfer, including style strength, which if you crank up a little too high, might result in something like this, wherein a lot of our base image just kind of vanishes underneath 
the weight of the style transfer. Lots of other really cool use cases for this. Javi Lopez from Magnific actually took this 3D rendering of a living room and then using the style transfer, uh, turned it into this. There was also this example, which is a real photograph. I know it's getting harder and harder to tell these days, uh, but by using a reference image from The Secret of Monkey Island, one of the greatest games ever, this ended up being the result, which kind of looks like a detective noir movie taking place on Monkey Island, and now I really wanna play that game. One idea that I thought would be interesting would be to take our cyberpunk character that we generated in Semantic Palette and bringing that into Magnific, uh, and then using the film preset, uh, we ended up with with this, which it looks pretty cool. I then took that image and then ran it through a Magnific Standard and we ended up with this, which looks really great. And I'm gonna call that final. I mean, when you really zoom in, you can see exactly how much heavy lifting Magnific really does. I noticed in particular, the car definitely picks up a lot of extra details right down to kind of the bootleg Honda emblem. Overall, I think this is a really interesting new feature for Magnific. And look, I know that Magnific and Javi both take a lot of grief. It seems like every other week there is a Magnific killer that is released. But I always have felt that Magnific has just a little something extra in it. Uh, I actually really appreciated something that Javi said the other day when yeah, yet another Magnific killer appeared on the scene. I feel sorry when someone tries to deceive people, making them think they have the one Magnific formula, when in reality they don't, because the Magnific formula consists of a lot of small pieces and fine tuning that are impossible to replicate. But more importantly, they don't need the Magnific formula because each upscaler could be unique. And that echoes something that I've been saying for a while now. I don't want a one ring to rule them all video or image generator. They should all do different and unique things. For example, taking our cyberpunk woman output and bringing her over into Leonardo's new universal upscaler, uh, running that with the knob cranked at 10 under the cinematic profile gives us this, which I, I think that looks really, really fantastic. Same thing goes for Korea, three different outputs, three different looks, and that is great. Sliding over at an interesting use case experiment with Kyber's new 3.0 motion feature. Uh, you're gonna have to bear with me here. This is gonna be a bit of a ride. So one of my favorite movies of all time is Paul Venerhoven's Starship Troopers. It was released in 1997 and it still holds up to this day. Although I always feel the need to point out that the movie is satire. I feel that that definitely gets lost on a number of people. Like Venerhoven's other classic ultra-violent sci-fi movie, Robocop, over the years, Starship Troopers has generated a few really terrible sequels and a few pretty bad animated series. Now, one of those animated series, and I'm not gonna call it good by any means, but it wasn't all terrible either, was Starship Troopers Roughnecks. The animation by today's standards is pretty rough. Look, it's 1999. They were working with what they had on very tight budgets and probably ultra tight deadlines. But from what I remember, the writing was pretty decent and it definitely still to this day has a solid fan base. So I thought that this might make a really good example to try to run through Kyber's Motion 3.0 and see what we could do with it. So taking this sequence, a very low res capture, And taking that and bringing it into Kyber using the lost preset and running it, we ended up with this. I mean, that's not bad. It does have a few morphing and warping issues here and there, but nowhere near the level of like old Kyber. Additionally, I did think like these rocky textures didn't work out so well, but if you look at the original source material, I mean, those are some pretty bad textures to begin with. But I'll say, I think it did a pretty great job with the faces and the armor texture. Now, I will say that there are still problems with this technique. Uh, for example, in a previous experiment that I ran, uh, you can see here that these two characters are supposed to be talking, their lips aren't moving. Um, they're also kind of the same character, but that might have something to do with the fact that I ran this as one long segment. Whereas I think that maybe if you were to clip each shot out and run it through Kyber, you might get better results. That said, 
that's a lot of work. That's kind of something that I keep saying with all of these AI tools. Everyone's always like, oh, it, it makes everything so easy. And like, kind of it does, but it also increases a lot of smaller tasks if you want to accomplish something that looks good. Popping over for a quick update from Meshi.ai, who we did look at in a previous video. Well, they've introduced a new feature. In that previous video, we did a full walkthrough of Meshi. This was the cyberpunk robot with black metal armor that we generated. Well, now Meshi has introduced essentially like 3D in painting. Uh, so as we can see here in this model, we've got this kid with kind of like two faces going on. Um, but uh, via this new AI texture editing thing, we can essentially you know, paint around the area, it will generate up options for us. Uh, and then we can then apply those to our 3D model where we can see there is definitely a major improvement. Although I did just notice that in the original model, this kid has like a, a tribal tattoo on uh, his neck, which definitely makes him the Zaymot of the twins. That's a deep cut GI Joe reference. Overall though, this is definitely a major improvement considering Meshi's only been around for a few months now. Um, yeah, you can definitely see how quickly all of this is progressing. Sliding over, but sticking with 3D to Say Motion by Deep Motion. This is text-based character animation. So there are, of course, a number of different character rig styles that you can choose from. But what is kind of fun is that you can actually take a photo of yourself, uh, upload it, and then have you become the character avatar. This is what it actually said that I look like. Uh, it's being very generous to me. And of course, I had to put myself in a blue business suit. So to get started, you simply hit, you know, create new animation. Uh, we'll select our character and turn it into me. Uh, from here, let's go over to generate animation and uh, put something like, like uh, walking down the street and then looking at his watch. We'll hit generate animation. And then after a few moments, we have actually two variations of CGI me doing that action. Now as a cool new feature, what we can actually do is come up to this in painting and it's not in painting as we you know traditionally visually think about it, but animation in painting. So as you can see, we now have a new timeline here for in painting and I'm gonna enter the text prompt karate kick. Uh, so let's generate that and see what happens. And after a few moments, we now have two variations of me walking down the street, doing a weird karate kick and then checking to see what time it is. It's roundhouse time. That's what time it is. Now, granted, that animation was pretty ridiculous, but if you do run across something that is useful to you, there you can then download it in FBX or a couple of other different file formats. So that's it for today. I hope you guys get a chance to play with some of this stuff before, you know, the next onslaught of creative AI tools shows up, which should be in what, like, 20 minutes or so. Should have done a karate kick before I checked my watch. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.